What's up, guys? Welcome to Amplify Youth. If this is your first time joining us, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to check us out. I want to get to know you a little bit better, so I'm going to be sure to include my email address in the beginning of the video as well as in the description below. Be sure to check that out. Shoot me a quick email. I'd love to personally welcome you to the Amplify Youth family. We are in week three of our four-week series called Cancelled, which is all about Love, but not love in the sense of the lovey dovey aspect, but love in the sense of godly love, love in the sense of action. And I want to start out with a question that's somewhat the opposite of love. I want to ask you have you ever felt envious of anybody? And for those of you wondering what envious means, have any of you ever felt jealous? of somebody. I mean like a friend, a sibling, uh, someone on social media, someone who's famous. I'm pretty sure that if we think hard enough, we all have. So now that we have something in common, I want to get us started and I want to be clear about what we mean when we say envy. Today, we're not defining envy as looking at someone's cool new shoes and thinking, man, I really wish I had that pair of Nikes or Adidas. Today, we're talking about envy in the way of what happens when somebody gets something that we really, really wish for or want really badly. And it brings us to a point, not of just like, man, I wish I had that, but a point of that we're actually like angry and we're frustrated. We've all had a moment or maybe a few when we've been a little bit envious of somebody, but how often has it happened to you that envy just turns into this big, ugly monster in your life and it starts distracting you from all the things around you. I know for me, whenever I transferred out of junior high into high school, I was excited to be playing football. And I remember very specifically the head coach going around the room, checking off everybody and making sure that all of his roster was there. So he would look around the room and he would see who you were and he would look at you and based off of what he saw of you, he would say, freshman, junior varsity, varsity. He got to my name and I, if y'all haven't noticed, I'm a little large. I've always been a little large. He got to my name and he looked at me and he said, varsity. So I was excited, right? So the day came, we suffered through summer training and we were practicing for a game. And they had this guy, his name was Brody. And Brody was a big dude also. And I remember going out to the football field and we were practicing and we were playing tug of war. We were playing tug of war with a tire. Me and Brody went head to head. Now, I was excited, right, because I was like, man, I'm going to get the chance to face this guy who is a bigger guy, and I'm going to show not only am I the king of all of you, but I'm the king of the big guys, right? Like, can't nobody take me down. But that's not what happened. As a matter of fact, Brody ended up kind of dragging me through the sand a little bit, and everybody was cheering him on, and I was envious, I was angry and I was really frustrated. It's easy to make an excuse for the way that you're feeling. It was easy for me to say, man, I, my foot slipped. It was easy for me to say like, man, I was just tired from the running before. It was easy for me to say, man, he got lucky this time. Whether we wish we had somebody's position on the team or some of the recognition that somebody had or the social media following somebody has, it may start small, but envy can grow into a huge monster. Let me give you an example. Let's say like me, you go out for the football team or whatever your sport of preference is, and you make the team, and that's exciting. But coach kind of tells you that through tryouts, you, you have a lot to work on, but your best friend is just crushing it, and suddenly... Uh, without much effort, they look like they're going to start. That might add a little bit of frustration to the pot. Let's fast forward a little bit and it becomes game day and you're walking down the hallway and the girl that you like loves football players or guy that you like loves cheerleaders for my boys and girls out there. But 
they pay more attention to your best friend because they're going to be starting. And you get a little bit more envious. Now, let's say that at this point, you're kind of frustrated. You're thinking, man, I grew up with this person. Uh, He or she really isn't all that. You go to the game and you get put in for a play, but you get knocked down. So coach pulls you out. And then your best friend goes into the exact same position and you think, man, he's, he's about to get hurt. And he goes out there and he makes the play of the game. And it gets a little bit worse. Now, at the end of it all, you think, okay, this can't possibly get any worse. So you go into the locker room and you get made fun of a little bit. And then your friend walks in and next thing you know, you are hearing him get all the praise. You started off clear and level-headed. And when you're finished, green ugly monster. That escalated pretty quickly. So does the envy within us. Without us even really noticing what's fueling it, what's feeding it, Our envy grows and grows and grows and grows. Here's what scripture talks about. In the book of Proverbs, now Proverbs is a book of of wisdom. Proverbs 27 and 4 tells us, Anger is cruel and fury overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? Think back to that last time you were absolutely furious at somebody. Do you remember how you felt in that moment? Do you still feel that way right now? Maybe not. Anger is a big emotion, but it comes and goes. Jealousy, on the other hand, keeps growing and growing and growing, and it begins to turn to harm, and it begins to hurt our relationships, and it begins to hurt the way that we think about ourselves, the way that we think about people around us, the way that we move about our days. In the Bible, we find a story about a time when envy slowed slowly destroyed a king named Saul. Saul was the king of Israel, but he had a problem. See, because he had been disobedient to God, God rejected Saul and chose a young shepherd by the name of David to come in and rule in place of Saul. Now, Saul knew a king was coming, but he didn't know who it was going to be. When Saul first encountered David, he was impressed. David played the harp or the lyre. And he defeated a terrifying enemy of the kingdom, which many of you know is David and Goliath. Now, maybe you've heard that story where he grabbed the slingshot and slung it at Goliath's head and it killed him. David became best friends with King's son, Jonathan. Then David even led tons of missions for Saul's army and always did well with them. But when Saul let envy start to creep in, he saw strength and potential in David and did not like what he saw in it. While David was being recognized and celebrated, Saul's envy began to grow. 1 Samuel 18, verses 6 through 10 read as this. Now it happened as they were coming home when David was returning from the slaughter of the Philistine that the woman had come out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines with joy and with musical instruments. So the women sang... As they danced and said, Saul has slain his thousands and David slain his tens of thousands. Then Saul was very angry and the saying displeased them. And he said, they have ascribed to David ten thousands. And to me, they have ascribed only thousands. Now, what more can we have but in the kingdom? So Saul eyed David from that day forward. And it happened on the next day that the distressing spirit from God came upon Saul and he prophesied inside the house. So David played music with his hand as at other times, but there was a, a spear in Saul's. Now, that took a pretty drastic turn at that point, right? 
I mean, Saul wasn't interested in celebrating David or the victory that he had won. He was interested in the recognition he was going to get. He was interested in making sure that David stayed a commonplace. He, he didn't overthrow Saul. He didn't get more recognition than Saul. Saul's first attempt to kill David failed. But in 1 Samuel 19 verses 1 through 12, we see that it continued and continued and continued. And after David escaped, he ran far away from Saul, as far away from Saul as he could, with Saul in pursuit. At this point, he's chasing David. He hunted David from city to city. His envy so great that Saul was ready to do anything in order to see David dead. But something surprising, ha some surprising things happened during that pursuit. David had a chance to kill Saul, but he did not. David had a second chance to kill Saul, but even then he didn't take the chance. David and Saul finally call a truce and promise never to harm each other. Then they finally part ways and never see each other again. Now, this is a brief summary of what all takes place. Again, this is 1 Samuel 19. Be, feel free to go check that out for yourself if you would like. I wish I could tell you that Saul had totally changed his mind and stopped hating David, but that's not the case. Now, David got the promise to be able to live in peace. Saul was no longer going to try to kill him. But scripture tells us that he probably continued hating him from that point. Scripture doesn't always have a happy and fairy tale ending. Not every story in the Bible has the happy ending or comes with a clear and practical takeaway. But here's what we can do with the story like Saul's. We can reflect on his life choices Consider how his actions line up with what we know about God and look to the words of Jesus. Matthew 22, verse 36 through 39 reads, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. When you're not sure what you are to do in the eyes of the Lord, in the eyes of Jesus, always come back to this verse in Matthew 22. Understand that your call above anything else is to love God and love people. So I have a question. Who in this story did you relate to? Are you like David? Do you feel like all the good in the world that you do, somebody is always right behind you trying to take the good away, trying to harm you, trying to get the eyes refocused on them? Do you feel alone and confused and like you've almost been canceled? Or are you like Saul, where, where envy and jealousy just continue building up in you to where all you can focus on is what somebody else has. You're not even worried about what's happening in your own life. Are you like both? Chances are, if you think hard enough and you look back far enough, you have some similarities between the two. Sure, you may fall victim to somebody's jealousy a lot of times, but if you look hard enough at your own life, I'm sure that there's somebody in it somewhere down the line that you've looked at and it's made you frustrated that you didn't have what they had. No matter how we relate to David or Saul, I think we can all agree that envy destroys relationships. But how do we stop being envious? It starts by finding contentment and fulfillment in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do you ever feel yourself wanting or obsessing over something that someone else has that really wouldn't change your life one way or another? Are you envious of somebody some, so badly to the point that you just detest them? What do they have that makes you so envious? Here's a big one. Is Jesus your source of encouragement? Are you going about your days every day and, and is your focus on how can I better make this day about God? How can I better serve Jesus in this day? Or is it all about what, what me, 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 what I can get, what I can do, the recognition I can have? If that's what you're looking for, I highly recommend that we take a moment and we ask God to change your heart. If we want to replace envy with love, this is where we have to start. When our contentment is found in Jesus, it becomes so much easier to love others including those who have the things that we wish we had. So I'm going to ask everybody, everybody who took a moment today to click on this video, to listen to this lesson, to hear the word of God, and to look at your own heart and see the way that you have been living your life and the things that you envy the most. I'm going to ask you in every room, everywhere that you are, take a moment, bow your head, close your eyes. We're going to ask God to come in, Jesus to come in and change your life, change your heart. 
and make a difference. Helped you to stop living for things and recognition and people and start living for what really matters, the kingdom and the love of Christ. Father God, we want to come to you today, and I I thank you for everybody who came in here to to hear your word today, Lord. Thank you for blessing us with 66 love letters in Scripture. And Lord, through those love letters, you teach us to do two things of the greatest commandment, and that's to love you and to love each other. Lord, we pray that as we go about our days this week, that we remember not to strive for the things that we want, not the earthly things, but the heavenly things, Father. Help us to spread your love, to spread your word. Help us to better love the way that you have loved us. Help us to treat people the way that we wish to be treated. Lord, help us get rid of the ugly green enemy that we call envy and and fill our hearts with love. Fill our hearts with compassion, Fill our hearts with hope. Lord, because we know that things, things may come into our life and make it easier. It may come into our life and make it fun. Things may come into our life and make it different. But Lord, nothing can come in our life and make it full the way that you can, Father. Lord, we thank you for the love that you have for each of us, and we pray that we give that love out. Lord, that's not a gift that we are to hold cl- close to our sides and keep for ourselves. It's a, it's a gift that we are to share with the world. And we thank you that we may have that gift more abounding. We love you today, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.